How good are you with the power supply? I used to just flip mine on, dial in my power and go, but there is so much more to them if you dig in a little. So today we're gonna look at nine power supply tips and capabilities you should know. We've had no new videos for a month. Why not? Well, the pandemic for one, you might've seen on Twitter that my family and I caught it, but we're recovering and we're fine. I've also been working on a quarantine mustache. Well, the wife hates it and the kids run in terror, so sadly, it's gotta go. I've also been putting together trumpets, please. Keysight University. Right now there are six classes and counting, including a master class on bench power supplies. The rest of this video is just the first part of that master class, so if you really want to dig in deep to how to get the most out of your power supply, go check that course out at keysight.com slash find slash power course. This video and that course are all from an unscripted brain meld sit down with Bill Griffith, resident power expert. There are also some other great courses like the RF power measurements course and the signal integrity with the VNA course. Go check them out. You also get a nifty certificate. I've been personally putting these together and if you like this channel, you should love Keysight University and you should also subscribe to this channel. Okay, let's get started. The first of the nine items on our agenda is load regulation. And if you sit around till the end, there's actually a couple bonus topics. You'll be a power supply pro. So spec number one is load regulation. So what is, what is load regulation? Load regulation is the ability for a power supply to keep outputting at set voltage, regardless of what the load does. And that's really important in today's designs. We have so many designs that um, use a lot of power and then they, they stop using power, either they save batteries or in our case of our electromechanical devices, you actuate something and then that, that ends. And so you see this uh, giant current burst and then it goes away. And that's pretty hard for a power supply to maintain its output voltage under those conditions. And so that's what load regulation is all about. And one of the key specs under that is actually its transient response. So we do a pretty rigorous test when it comes to transit response. We actually go from 50% power to full power and see how fast the power supply can recover. And these power supplies typically cover under um, 50 milliseconds to that type of a okay. full load condition. So, so that's kind of like, you know, the AC kicks on, the lights flicker, or the car turns on, like on our, our minivan, if you start the car while the doors are closing, it pauses the doors because it's not gonna be able to get the power. Um, an ideal supply will never change no matter what. We also right. see this on, on digital boards when they set a bunch of ones or go to zero, then the, the line voltages ripple. Um, so load regulation tells you how well your supply is actually able to handle that. Correct. Line regulation is another spec. So what's the difference between line regulation and load regulation? Sure, line regulation is really what happens to the AC power coming into the power supply. So it's, it's really um, not as, it's pretty uncommon today that your power varies, but if your power was to vary from, um, say in the US 115 volts and it, it raised up to 120 and back down to 110, um, maybe you're at the end of a, a transmission line, you might see those types of variations. So how well can the power supply maintain its DC output while the AC power is varying? And that's what line regulation is all about. Okay, so there are countries I know where the power is less than reliable, like here where we are, especially in this building, like we get pretty solid power. We have a bunch of stuff piped in, but a lot of places don't necessarily get that constant input, or maybe their AC kicks on and it dips, and then they're trying to run a test, and they're like, oh, what is this weird glitch on my system? But really it was just their power supply dipping, and that's because of line regulation. What about programming accuracy? Programming accuracy is when you set the output to say 12 volts, how accurate is that output going to be? And so the output accuracy gives you a, a spec around its ability to output a, a voltage. Um, okay, so you, you set it to six volts. Is it actually six volts coming out? Correct. So it's kind of just like an a source accuracy spec. It is. Great. So we talked about programming accuracy. What about readback accuracy? Well, readback accuracy has really improved on our modern power supplies. And to the point where a lot of times you used to break out the multimeter and, and check your outputs to see if they're outputting the voltage that you thought they were. So you'd have your old power supply, you'd stack a DMM on top and make sure you're actually getting the power that you think your power supply is. 
Absolutely, okay. absolutely. But with a, a modern um, power supply that with a good readback accuracy, you can actually eliminate that need for your um, voltmeter and just look at the the power supply, set it and look at the readback and, and make sure that it's where okay. you think it should be. And there's like a internal, basically like a shunt resistor of some type that it measures or how does how does it know what it's putting out? You're correct. So it, it measures the, the voltage with its ADD converter and then the, uses a shunt resistor to measure the current. And actually we have um, two shunt resistors. So when you're outputting a low current, we actually use a, a different shunt resistor oh. so we get additional resolution. So. Okay, and that'll help your readback accuracy based Correct. on the shunt resistor you use. Yes, absolutely. What is power supply resolution? So that's just strictly the number of digits we show. And so a really good example of that is on our current measurements, when we move to a low current, you'll actually see our resolution increase by a full digit and that helps when you're working with low power IoT devices. So resolution just um, is gonna show you the number of digits that you have available to you. Okay, and that's like how finely you can tune your source output? Correct. Okay. Okay, power supply output noise. Really important specification. When you talk to a hardware engineer, that's one of the things that they look for is that output noise. And so it's just a really important to, to have a low output noise. It's usually measured two different ways. There's a, an RMS measurement for it, meaning the average output noise, as well as a peak to peak measurement. And so when you're working with these sensitive devices, a lot of times that noise could really throw them off. So having um, you know, low output noise is, is really important. Okay, so you know, the ideal source, zero output noise, 5.000, repeating forever. Yep. A real life power supply is actually gonna have some, some noise. It's not gonna be 5.0000, it's gonna be 5.002, plus or minus, you know, two milliamps or volts or watts. Correct, yeah, it's, it's a pretty- Is it in volts or amps or watts? Both, so both. we, we uh, specify okay. both the uh, um, output noise for the current as well as the voltage. So I hear power supplies can actually use the force and they have a sense connection. So what, what are the sense connections? The sense connections are used to reduce the uh, voltage air in your leads. Okay. So whenever you're, especially with high current, when you hook up leads to your power supply, you're gonna get some loss in those leads. So the sense connections allow you to hook up to the end of those power leads and it will actually remove that voltage air by measuring the voltage at the end of your leads. And so that gives you uh, more accurate voltage regulation you know, at your device. Okay, so maybe you want 10 volts at your device, but you have some loss in your leads. So you can set up a sense connection. It'll use the end of the, or essentially use the sense connection measurement. So maybe it supplies 12.1 volts or 10.1 volts to get 10 volts to the, the dot at the end of the, the supply line. Absolutely, and you really see this again with the higher current devices. So a lot of the automotive devices um, they draw a tremendous amount of, of current and you actually will see a drop in, the, in your leads and, and actually see some different behavior if the voltage drops um, too low for that device. Okay, makes sense. So when I use a power supply, I often think about just using the front panel, but there's a lot of different ways to both control the supply and to get data off of the supply. So what are those different interface items that you should maybe think about or be aware of? True. So the the, mo the oldest one that you um, rarely see anymore is actually we used uh, analog programming. So it's actually you'd put in either a resistance or you'd put in a small voltage, and based on that voltage you get a proportional voltage out the front. Really? So that's the the oldest way of programming a power supply, and you'll occasionally see that um, listed in the capabilities as an analog um, input capability. Fast. It's like a, actually like a parametric or like a parametric parameter that you're putting in. Like if I put in like 100 millivolts, then it's gonna output this higher voltage level. Correct, yeah, it's usually some like zero to one volt and your power supply might be zero to 10 and it would be a proportional control. Okay. Interesting, so what else? Obviously we don't use that as the main no. source any anymore. So some of the uh, more common ones today are uh, USB is great, um, connects easily with a, a PC. So you can um, write um, programs or use our Benchview software to um, program your power supply. Um, LAN is awesome, especially if you're working remotely. So you just plug it in, you can find it anywhere in the building. And then um, finally, we still have GPAB as an option on, on most of our power supplies, okay. as a lot of people still use that in, in test systems. 
Yeah, and GPIB I think happens more in like test racks, less. I'm controlling a scope from my bench, I'll just plug it into USB or LAN. Absolutely. And I can also pull data off of that onto my PC with those interfaces. Correct, you, you can um, either pull the data back or, or control it or do some of both. And so mm. one of the um, common examples is doing um, curve tracing. So if you oh, wanted yeah. to characterize like a, a diode, you could set, write a short program to output several different voltages and measure the current at each of those voltages and then you make your uh, curve. Okay, you just basically plot the output and, and you have it. And the last one is protection features and capabilities. So essentially that's how to keep your stuff from messing up your other stuff. So if you could put it a little more eloquently, I would be much obliged. Absolutely, the most common protection that we have is everything we've talked about so far has been assuming that the power supply operates in constant voltage mode, meaning that you set a voltage and it's just gonna stay at that voltage. Um, in reality, you can set a current limit. And so if you exceed that limit, then the power supply will switch to constant current mode. So that's our first level of protection. And then on top of that, we have several more layers that we'll talk about more. Okay. So yeah, constant current essentially, it, it limits how much current is actually able to come out of the device so you're not you know, frying your traces. Right, and so the power supply will at that point will then just output that current that you set it for and the voltage will usually start to go lower as you increase the okay. load. And we'll talk more about that in a later video. And a bonus protection capability is fault trigger inputs. Can you tell me what those are? Yeah, anytime you see that emergency stop button, mm. that's a great example of a fault trigger. Okay. So the power supply will accept a signal in the back for a fault trigger. Another common application is if you have, you're using it with um, some sort of cover or shield from something that um, could hurt you. You open the, the cover, ah. the power supply. Okay, so it's like the she's gonna blow button or the like don't reach your hand in there button. Correct. Okay. Perfect, fault trigger inputs. And that's it for today. If you wanna keep this going, go check out the power supply course at Keysight University or one of the other courses that are over there. I promise you won't be disappointed. Also, if you like this format, it's a little new for us, let me know in the comments. I personally read each and every one of those. And make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell, give the video a like, and thank you for watching. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, and I hope to see you soon.